coming to these camps, what is one of the main things that they say? You don't know nothing. Everything you knew prior, man, was false. Now you've woken up to the truth. The white man lied to you. Now you sit down and you listen to what your leaders tell you. My question I've had for a long time. Um, I'm older. I'm 57. I have a son that's 27, and he's not in the truth. When I first came in the truth, with it being my only child, I just kept thinking, he's not in the What about the child? You know, that's your only one. You really love him. And that is where. One of the, the things with a struggle for me comes in is watching my child every day knowing that if they don't get it, it weighs on my heart. I'm looking at my son like you're gonna die. This is my only child. And I think about Abraham, but I just wanna know how do you really find some kind of comfort, you know, for those of us that are older, we have children that aren't in the truth, and we know what's gonna happen if they don't repent. Every day, and your heart does not be weighed. So, uh, let me just, I'm going to share a personal story. Um, me and my Lord have been, through, been together for over 30 years. Our oldest son decided that, you know, he wanted to be with a sister that me and my Lord did not approve of. So now he's out of the truth. Now, as his physical mother, I can understand the pain that you're going through in terms of saying, I gave birth to him, I carried him, and my father had me bring him into life. I don't want to see him get destructive. But I'm a little selfish right now. Let me tell you why. Did the scriptures say that he that loveth father, mother, son, daughter more than me is not worthy of me? And I, and I don't mean to get emotional here. I'll be damned. Do you see what I'm telling you? I want to get in. So if he don't want to get in after being raised in the truth, by him being forewarned by his father, his mother, even my worldly family telling him, you need to go back home. You need to keep these commandments. You was raised right. And you don't want to do it, then hell with you. And you might get caught up with the rest of everybody else that's going into everlasting fire. Into hell. So this is another form of hell. Read on. Into the fire. Into what? The fire. Read on. That never shall be quenched. And that fire will never be quenched. Read on. Where their worm dieth not. Where your worm dieth not, meaning your spirit is not going to die. You're going to be burning forever inside that flame of fire. That's when the nuclear bomb dropped. Imagine you getting burned like that forever. Imagine you getting burned like that forever because you can't keep your dick in your pants. Imagine you getting burned like that forever because you can't keep your dick in your pants. I want to give all the praises and the honor to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah Bahashem, Rechaha Kodash, and double honors to the elder apostles and elder bishops of Great Millstone. Salute and honors to you, other elders. And you brothers, you Akim, you fellow believers of this faith, you Akwaf, you few sisters, and Shalom to the hopeful elect. I want to go into this video here again with the bishop and the whole IUIC so-called community. And it just seems that they're continuing to put burdens on people, right? But they're coming with a form of truth. But then they are mixing it with deception. So you see this woman. Okay this woman is saying. Well first and foremost. Uh, I don't know who the person was in the beginning. Where he said. Well they teach to, to drop everything. And be taught all over again. Well the Bible does say that. You know. You have to learn all over. Be taught all over again. After all that's what the Christian church. Has programmed uh, in us from day one. That's why a lot of you jakes can't kick Christianity. But anyway, uh, this woman said, well, what about her son? Now, I'll go into some, some scriptures on that, right? There's a balance with that, and it's true. With, um, I think this Bishop Nathaniel's wife, 
uh, Matthew 19, I believe 28, somewhere around there. He who forsakes father, mother, brother, and sister, you know, for my name's sake, lands shall inherit a hundredfold. But they're not going into the true criteria of what, you know, of situation, right? And when you really go into it, if they're living peaceably amongst them, she can still communicate with her son if she has a son. I don't see why there's an issue unless the son is interfering. And this woman is 57 years old. Really, he's supposed to be off, have his family. You know, I get it. It's a balance. You got to cut off, you know, members of the family and move forward if they're holding you back or whatever. But they're really putting some heavy burdens on Jake, you know, and Eve. And this is where the hell doctrine it gets confusing because if there was, if this woman was following our doctrine, she would understand that, okay, <laughs> he ain't going to get it. I ain't going to try to wake him up. He could do his own thing, but he's going to be all right. But can you imagine the burden you have to feel and know or believe that if you don't, if your son doesn't follow the truth, he's going to burn or your mother or your father, right? The Most High didn't choose everybody to do this truth. This is just not an open door invitation for all to come in and, and, and be healed. Matthew 13 and 9 says that. I got to get a scripture first before I continue. It says, um, Let's go to Romans 12 and 18. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. You know, that's your, your family. If they're willing to be peaceably with you. If your son says, hey, ma, you know, I want to have a dinner with you. Now, all of a sudden, you can't do that? Like, come on, man. <clears throat> I guess this IUIC is teaching to totally cut off everybody. Right? And um, if if it's a hindrance and you don't want to deal with it, that's your choice. Okay, I don't want to deal with them. You know, but to make this a doctrine and say, you know, because we understand. We understand that all our family members aren't meant to get it, right? Our, our sons, our daughters, our mothers, our sisters, right? Even some of you wives who have wives, they just ain't meant to get it because it was not, they were not called. Not alone chosen, the elect is chosen, but they're not called. We have to accept the fact that this is also the mindset when you're talking about <clears throat> when you talk about building a nation. When you throw in all the purple, go out there and just try to wake up everybody. They're not understanding this is an election. Right? This is not about waking up everybody. Right? So this is a dangerous doctrine to teach. In the mindset of this woman, this woman has to be burning up inside, knowing that or believing that when her son dies, he's going to burn in hell for eternity. This is this is dangers of the Christian doctrine. Bishop Nathaniel has done nothing but lump some Christianity into being a Hebrew Israelite with some more treacherous ways. You know, let's go to Matthew's eight. In 18, now then Yahabashah saw uh, uh, great multitudes about him. He gave a commandment to depart unto the other side. So when you come into truth, there has to be leader, leadership, order, right? Some people don't understand that, except when they got to ask their pastor. But anyway, and a certain scribe came and said unto him, Master, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. And Yahabashah said unto him, The foxes have holes, the birds uh, of the air have nests. But the son of man have nowhere to lay his head. He was warning them, hey, be prepared for a sacrifice, right? To come, you know, on this, this journey. And another of his, remember everything Yahabashah did is an example of us to be spiritual, right? And another disciple said unto him, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. What is this saying? But Yahabashah said unto him, follow me. And let the dead bury the dead. What he's saying here is when it comes to the truth, you put the truth first. Right? 
follow me, it's following the heavenly father, you know, through his son, and let the dead bury the dead. The important task at hand is the ministry. That is very important. But if somebody's not forcing you to, uh, um, or trying to push a doctrine on you or just saying, hey, I, you know, I don't know why you, you know, teaching this crap. You know, this is wicked. You're going off my, you know, stuff like that. Well, then you may have to cut them off and, and go on to the journey. You have to follow. Look, everyone is accounted, you know, everyone is accountable for themselves. But the reason why I'm going in this video, because the mindset of these people that is in this group is almost like the mindset of a Christian. Right? Let's go to Romans eleven twenty six, And so all Israel shall be saved as it is written. Yeah, two thirds are going to die, but all Israelites are going to be saved. There shall come out of Zion, a Zion, the deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. Yes, they're not breaking this down right. They, but they, they're believing, like we believe, there's an, well, there's a whole nation going to be saved, but they're not thinking about the two thirds. Their deliverance will ultimately come from the men of the Lord that are that are saved from this deliverance on this side. Like two thirds when they die. Their souls will be delivered up. Their spirits will be delivered up and they'll be purified and cleansed to come back and serve, you know, sir, you know, come back to Lachia and, and be, um, you know, of the children of Israel. Right. So the elect is going to be delivered first. 144,000, the one third elect families, men, women, and children, they'll be delivered. And, the one, and if your mother doesn't make it, or your uncle, your parents, or your sons and daughter don't make it, oh well. We're not worried about it. But when you put this mindset of hell on the people, she's really worried about that. She's worried about, and hey, my son, she's got to go to bed every night thinking about her son's going to burn in eternity for hell. And this is why they go with the New Testament. I'm going to go to Hebrews 8. This is why they're pushing that we're already in the New Covenant. Because if you push in the New Covenant, that promotes the hell doctrine. They're nothing but Christians in purple and gold. This is why they teach the New Covenant. Because if this isn't the New Covenant yet, then this is a prophecy to come. Remember, Yahweh said, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until I drink it new with you in my father's kingdom. Have that happened yet? But here we go. The, uh, again, Yahweh is that bridge of mercy between us not being able to keep the law and faith. But they don't they don't teach this. For finding fault with them, behold, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, will I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. They believe the new covenant came when Yahweh uh, died on the, on the crooks, as I call it, on the tree. Then the new covenant was activated. See, that, with that, then you could push the hell doctrine. Because if you don't teach the hell doctrine, then you can see how all this lines up. Right? Because wait a minute. He said he's going to, um, let me go on down here. He says, it says, let me get to the point. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days. They're thinking of those days after Yahweh said the Lord, I will put my laws into their mind. And this is why they're trying to act like they're keeping laws. Right? So why didn't he, Bishop Nathaniel, whenever a, a, a betrothed damsel, which they're not damsels, nor are they really betrothed, but okay, they're acting it out. Somebody says Deuteronomy 22 and 28 says the damsels, uh, um, the man who lay with the woman shall give the father 50 shekels of silver. So Nathaniel, Bishop Nathaniel should be collecting those 50 shekels of silver. You see how it's not making sense? You can't keep the whole law. And these women would have been virgins. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts. 
So why aren't they keeping the whole laws? I guarantee you IUIC is not doing that. Right? I will be to them a God and they shall be to me a people. And it goes on to say, and they shall teach, not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother saying, no, the Lord. That's the cutter right there. Because in order for that new covenant that had kicked in, we would have no, have no reason out there teaching. Because <clears throat> nobody, we will not have to teach. The Lord said he would put his laws into us and in our hearts where we, we would not sin no more. You see all the sinning that's going on in this school? That's another video going into the sinning um, when, you, when you're dealing with mercy and grace. Well, why do we need mercy and grace? If we can keep the full laws. You see, you see how it doesn't add up? It doesn't make sense. If we got the laws and we can keep the laws and we can follow all the laws, and the Lord said he will write his laws into our hearts, which means we would be perfect. So now you're saying the Lord isn't perfect. It's just what it is. This is uh, another example of Matthew, I believe, 23. When the scribes and the, well, these Pharisees, let me say that, they write, um, they put burdens on men's shoulders, and now they won't lift a finger to help them. She'll calm them, she'll call and try to, you know, smooth out the spirit. But that ain't make that woman feel any better. I guarantee it. It is what it is, man. This is a fraudulent Christian church of Israelites. That's all I have on that, Shalom.